Okay, folks, uh, and regarding our last video, it actually did work, where it, it went to an error disable state, and uh, the MAC address was different, so it put it in, actually it did work. So, um, that's a good thing. I'm glad it did. So, but we're going to talk about .1x authentication to, uh, right now, and we're going to minimize this, and scroll down to .1x authentication. It is somewhere in here. There it is. Um, it uses a username and password authentication between the client and the switch. It also uses uh, AAA or authorization, auth authentication, and accounting with the RADIUS server for authentication. It stops illegitimate hosts from joining the network in the first place. So what we're going to do here is we're going to... Well, that's, that's the solution. I want to go to here. So it says switch ones port 10 and 11 uh, in the lobby VLAN are only for internal corporate use, uh, not designed for guest access. To ensure that they are only used for legitimate access, the design team has requested that you uh, configure .1x authentication to be used to authorize uh, access for these ports using internal uh, an internal RADIUS server. To accomplish this, uh, you need to... To accomplish this, configure the ports with .1x authentication per the following requirements. The RADIUS server's uh, address is 10101300 and uses an encryption key of DBM RADIUS. Hosts who successfully authenticate should uh, be allowed access to the network. Force the host to re-authenticate every five minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're on switch two already. We're going to go exit out of here. We're going to telnet to actually just 192.168.1.61. So we're going to jump up here and we're going to do a term on. And what we're going to do is we're going to say show VLAN. Lobby VLAN is going to be 10 and 11. So config T. We're going to type in uh, AAA new model. And then what we're going to do from here is, all right, well, I had to look up the config because I honestly didn't remember how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in um, AAA authentication, and we're going to use .1x is going to be our authentication type, default configuration, and we're going to use a server group, and we're going to say radius. That's going to be the next line of config. Now, to turn it on system-wide, this tells it we're going to use AAA new model. This one says we're going to use the authentication mode .1x as the default uh, server group, and we're going to use radius as the default uh, server to try to authenticate to. There's other ones we could use, like the local database, things like that, or we could use Kerberos authentication, or we can use the enable ser uh, secret. We're going to use the group. This is how we pinpoint it to a... Uh, server uh, uh, radius server. So now we're going to go. We're going to type in dot one x. We're going to say system uh, sys <laughs> auth control. This turns it on system wide. So this will go to. Um, it'll also enable it for the VTY lines dot one or telnet uh, B, uh, console so on and so forth. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to interface pass these in a zero slash ten. And we're going to type in dot one x uh, port control, and we have three options. We have auto, which is automatically going to try to uh, authorize it, which means you have to type in a password. We're going to say force authorize. This is going to be for devices where dot one x is not compatible with the device plugging into the switch. So, for instance, if you have a uh, printer or something like that that doesn't have the capability of doing dot one x, we would have to set it up for force authorize, so it wouldn't have to authenticate. Or we can say force unauthorized and port state will be set to unauthorized so they won't have to authenticate. So we're going to set it to auto and we're going to say the dot one x um, timeout is going to be a re-auth of 300 seconds for 5 minutes. 5 or 300 seconds. And then dot one x re-authentication and go from there. We're going to do a do show run interface fast ethernet 0 slash 10. 
and we're going to copy this information right here. This one comes on by default. So we're going to have interface fast user to zero source 11. Oh, no, 11. And we're just going to right click and paste. Now what we got to do is we got to exit out of here and we have to be able to talk to the radius server. So we're going to ping ping 10.10.13.100 and I have a oh you know what I have an SBI hmm oh you know let me go to switch to uh, exit out of here and show IP interface brief I have a yes I have an SBI configured with that IP address for VLAN 20 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the um, uh, you know what Let me do this instead. Normally, you, in the exam, they're going to have to tell you what it is, <laughs> and you're going to have to have reachability to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back to this guy. I'm going to do a sh enable um, show ARP. I want to know who I can talk to. So I can talk to router 6. So ping 10.50.46.6. Okay, I, I'll make him the radius server. So, <coughs> I'm going to go to global config. I'm going to type in radius server. And we're going to say, uh, we have a lot of options in here. This is kind of new, uh, new ground for me. But you're going to use the host keyword. And you're going to say, what is the IP address? We're going to do 10.50.46.6. And we're going to say, now we have to specify a key. Per server encryption key overrides the default. So we're going to type in key and then the actual line. So dbm underscore radius. So now router 6 would be acting as our radius server. So that's how we actually configure it. So now if we do show dot 1x, dot 1x. all the way that it's set up is it is set up for 10 the authenticator is going to be the um, that's the the payload how it's going to use port control is auto control direction is both the host is a single host the violation mode is protect re-authentication is enabled um, we have the re-auth period is 300 seconds and we're going to give it a maximum uh, of two attempts so that's basically what we have. So that is how you would configure Radius. You would go in, you would configure AAA new model to turn on AAA with the new model. You would do AAA authentication, dot one x default. The group would specify a server that you're going to use in Radius. If you were to use the default and say the local database, you could do that as well. So basically what you would do is you could event, um, effectively you could tell it to you can't allow anybody in unless there's a if you do a show user uh, users all we have Rob which is me and we could do a show run if you don't have this configure a username and then a uh, password it's all, uh, attached to it what will end up happening is if there's nothing here what will end up happening is you won't be able to authenticate. Now I'm going to show you one little trick here, uh, which is um, it is AAA authentication dot one x default, and now we have a couple options here. We're going to use this is a, what they call a default method list. A method list is the uh, ways that the, uh, AAA is going to go through in order to authenticate you getting onto the device. So we're going to use local, and we're going to use case because I have a case sensitive username. My cat. My name is capital. My R and Rob is capitalized. 
So now if we do it and we do a show run again, we're going to use, oh, we should have local caves, but normally what it would do is it would go out to a radius server and go from there, but there's lots of default. We can configure a method list to do something other than this, or it's going to use the local database to, to authenticate me. So that's how that would work. So that that is radius. That is triple A. Um, if we do a show line or show show uh, show run shoe run show run in, in uh, section or no uh, show run. I'll drop down to the bottom here. So as you can see, we have a lot going on on these interfaces. The more you add, the longer the config gets. So right now we have, uh, it says right here, um, hmm. we have radius server host. This is the host IP address. Authorization port, is, this is the actual port that it's going to use for authentication. It's going to be 1645, and uh, the account port is going to be 1646. These are both UDP ports because Radius is UDP based. If you're going to use TACAX, that would be TCP based, and I forget the port number for it, but it would be TCP based where just the, um, just the password is encrypted. The payload is unencrypted, where with TACAX, the, the everything is encrypted so this is information the authorization port needs to be 1645 the accounting port is going to be 1646 so just in case you were wondering about that that's how that works so um, so the next one we're going to do is VLAN access lists and we're going to get into that that should be kind of cool uh, to see what they're going to have us do with that one so I hope this has been informative for you I'd like to thank you for viewing